Sound synthesis typically starts with simple mathematical shapes. We generate sine waves, square waves, triangular waves, combine them, filter them, and from those waveforms, we produce sound. Granular synthesis flips this process. Instead of starting from scratch, we take an existing audio file and slice it into tiny fragments called grains, each just a few milliseconds long. These are building blocks. We can overlap them, repeat them, shuffle their order, or stretch their duration to create entirely new sonic textures. So what steps would we take to implement granular synthesis in code? First, we'll need to read an audio file. Once we have the raw audio data, we'll slice it into grains. To do this, we'll need to decide how big each grain should be. That's our grain size measured in milliseconds, and how many grains we want per second of audio. That's our grain density. With those values, we can work out how to space the grains in the output by dividing the sample rate by the grain density. For example, with a standard sample rate of 44,100 samples per second and a grain density of 100, each new grain will be placed 441 samples after the start of the previous one. Depending on grain size and density, those grains will often overlap. To add variety or texture, we want to introduce the possibility of randomness or jitter into how we slice the grains from the source audio. Instead of always taking grains from their natural position, we may offset the starting point forward or backward by a random amount. Small jitter adds subtle variation, making things sound more natural. Larger jitter values can break up the original audio entirely, producing more scattered atmospheric effects. When the grains are recombined, their abrupt edges may cause clicks or pops, especially when their positions have been randomly offset. To soften these transitions, we can apply a window to gently fade each grain in and out. After that, we can mix the grains into an output buffer, adding each grain to its calculated position. Overlapping audio tends to boost volume unpredictably, so once all grains have been added, we may want to apply normalization to avoid clipping. Finally, we can write the output to a new audio file. Let's open a new Python script and define a main function. To implement granular synthesis, we'll need to use some external libraries. We'll import numpy as np, soundfile as sf, and random. We'll define a function called granular synthesis. It will require a path to the input file we want to work with, the output file name where we'll save our processed audio, a grain size specified as the length of each grain in seconds, a density telling us how many grains to play per second, and a jitter value to control how much randomness we add to each grain's placement. This will be defined as a proportion relative to the spacing between grains. For example, a jitter value of 0.5 means each grain's start time can shift earlier or later by up to 50% of its normal spacing, while a value of 5 means it could shift by up to 500%. Inside the function, we'll first extract the data array and sample rate from our audio file using sf.read. To keep things simple in this example, we'll convert multi-channel audio, such as stereo, to mono. Mono audio is represented as a one-dimensional array of samples. Multi-channel formats come as multi-dimensional arrays, where each row contains sample values for each channel at a given point in time. So if audio.ndime is greater than 1, we'll convert it to mono by averaging the channels using np.mean. Each row within the array holds sample values for a single point in time, one per channel. Averaging across axis 1 gives us a single sample value per time step. The grain size the user provides is in seconds, but we'll need to process this in samples. To get the number of samples that make up one grain, we'll multiply grain size by the sample rate. We'll then convert it to an integer because the number of samples has to be a whole number. Next, we'll calculate how far the grain should be spaced. Dividing sample rate by the grain density and converting it to an integer gives us the number of samples between the start of each grain. But if the density is very high, the result could be less than 1, which doesn't make sense for sample spacing. We can't have zero or fractional samples between grains. So to avoid this, we'll use max to cap the spacing to the greater of sample rate divided by density, or 1. This ensures we never end up with a spacing of less than one sample between grains. To create an output array, we'll need to determine how many samples it should contain. 
we'll set this equal to the length of the original audio data. With that, we'll initialize an output buffer, a new array to store the audio data we generate. We'll use np.zeros to create an array filled with zeros, with the same length as the original audio. We'll gradually fill this with grains of sound. To smoothly fade each grain in and out, we'll create a Hanning window using np.hanning. This smoothly rises from 0 to 1 in the center and back down to 0 at the end. Multiplying this by a grain fades in and out that grain's amplitude, helping to avoid clicks. We'll specify a size equal to the number of samples per grain. To perform the granular synthesis, we'll generate grains one by one in a loop. So we need to calculate the total number of grains to generate. To avoid overrunning the end of the input audio, we'll subtract the grain size in samples from the total length of the audio. This guarantees there will always be enough space for a full grain at the final starting position. We'll then divide the result by the grain spacing to determine how many grains can fit before converting this to an integer. We'll need to keep track of each grain's start position. We'll create a position variable initialized to zero so that the first grain will be read from the beginning of the audio. We'll iterate over every grain we want to generate with for i in range grains total. Inside this loop, we'll first determine how much to randomly offset the grain start position based on the jitter argument. Using random.uniform, we'll generate a random number between minus jitter and jitter, scale this by grain spacing, and convert it to an integer. We'll calculate the jittered starting point of this grain in the input audio by adding that offset to the current position. Applying this offset may sometimes push our grain outside the bounds of the audio input array. We can handle this by using NumPy's clip function to constrain grain start so that it's not less than zero and not greater than the length of the audio minus samples per grain. If grain start falls outside of these bounds, it will be clipped to the closest valid index. Now we can extract the grain by slicing into the audio array from grain start to grain start plus samples per grain. We'll then multiply the grain by window to smooth its edges. We'll set the grain's position in the output buffer based on the position variable. We'll mix the grain into the output buffer by indexing into output from output position up to output position plus the length of the grain, and then add the grain, layering it on top of whatever is already there. We'll update the grain position ready for the next iteration, incrementing it by grain spacing. Once we've processed all the grains, we'll normalize the output. We'll find the peak value among the samples using np.max and use np.abs to get the absolute value of every sample, so both positive and negative peaks become positive. We'll divide our output by peak to normalize the entire waveform so that the new maximum absolute value becomes exactly 1. We'll then scale this by 0.8 to reduce the normalized waveform slightly to leave a bit of headroom. Finally, we'll write the synthesized audio using sf.write to output file providing the output data and sample rate. Let's try this out in main. Here's a WAV file saved in the current directory. Let's use this as input for our granular synthesis function. We'll call the output file granularoutput.wave and synthesize the output audio with a grain size of 0.05 seconds, a density of 100 grains per second, and a jitter value of 0.8. Now let's run the program. It sounds like we've added a tremolo effect. Let's see what happens if we increase the jitter to 50. It's much more fragmented. We'll increase it again to 500. Now the source audio is hardly recognizable. Let's try increasing the grain size to 0.2 seconds. Each time we create a new texture, with extremely high density and jitter, we can create something more like a cloud of sound. So how might we build on this? Our function currently always produces an output that's exactly the same length as its input, but we can easily modify its behavior to synthesize audio that's longer or shorter than the original. We do this by resizing the output buffer based on a stretch factor, and then scaling the right position in the output buffer proportionally to the stretch factor. 
This changes how the grains are spaced in time. A wider spacing creates a stretched version of the audio, and a closer spacing compresses the audio, making it shorter. To implement this, we'll introduce a stretch factor parameter to our function. Then we only need to modify a few lines in the code. To recalculate the output length, we'll multiply the length of the input audio by the stretch factor and then convert this value to an integer. To compute output position, we'll multiply position by stretch factor and convert the result to an integer. This effectively increases or decreases the spacing between the grains according to the stretch factor. Since the new output length is based on the stretch factor, there's a risk if we're compressing audio that some grains could overrun the end of the output buffer. To prevent this, we'll check if the output position plus the number of samples in a grain is greater than the output length. If so, we'll trim the grain up to output length minus output position. Let's test this with a stretch factor of 0.5 and a small jitter of 0.5. We have condensed the audio, doubling the tempo. We can create a stretched version by setting the stretch factor greater than 1. With the stretch factor of 2, we've halved the tempo. We can experiment with different combinations. This is just a basic implementation of granular synthesis, but we could continue to expand it with more features. We might, for instance, introduce pitch shifting, either applied to the entire output or randomized per grain. We could allow grain sizes to vary chosen at random within a specified range. We could vary the grain density per second dynamically over time, perhaps increasing or decreasing in waves. We might randomly or periodically reverse grains. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.